Hey, good testing, testing, testing. Oh, good, awesome. Wow, it's been a minute. What's up, BL? How you doing, I'm my dude? Um, so, thank you for showing up. I appreciate you being here, dude. I think I think it's just you. That's cool, though. No, 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 no. We have two people, and that's awesome. Welcome. So it's been it's been a minute. It's been a minute. A lot's happened. So um, I'll update you on what happened, and then <laughs> exactly, I'll update you on what happened, and then um, we'll we'll go ahead and like kick this off. Um, so as you know, as of April, live downrange has been well, it's been live. Um, I've been streaming for about the past four and a half years. Yeah, I know, right? Totally. I'm, I'm trying to embrace the salt and pepper. <laughs> Accepting myself. Um, so as of April, um, Live Downrange is a first-of-its-kind company. It's an LLC. And I uh, just started it. It's just getting off the ground. Um, we just got the website, www.livedownrange.com. It's up and running. Um, all the purchasing mechanisms work. Um, it is a startup. Uh, so what the company does is it does paid professional online moderation for content creators. Um, and it's something, it's been a project that's absolutely near and dear to my heart because I, I've known several streamers. I've watched several streamers. If you're a streamer, you know this too, but there's a lot of toxicity out there and content creation is becoming, is blowing up as a way to express oneself, right? So your your self-expression really goes into the content that you create. Some people do chats, some people do gaming, some people do whatever, right? You've got musicians, you have all kinds of personalities that come together online and take up this space called content creation. So with that, with all that good stuff comes some bad stuff too, right? Um, a lot of toxicity, a lot of um, immaturity, so you have people that want to cause problems just to see people hurt. Um, I'll show you the platform. Good job, dude. Good job. So um, whenever you're you're whenever you're streaming, you have a lot of positives and negatives that are happening at the same time. Um, bots can help out with like you know just taking certain words you know and pinging them, but someone you know making a death threat against you, someone that is destroying your community, right? Those are things that happen. In, in real time, you know, and you really need professional moderators to actually, you know, um, see those things happening and deal with them as they're as they're happening in your stream, so that you can focus on expressing yourself. You can focus on the positivity of your stream. You can focus on what you want to talk about and not have your entire stream derailed. So we got that up and running. So far, um, it's been great. Um, Nilla Teaspoon, she's been my mod for a very long time. Um, and she is an amazing person. She is sharp as hell, and she really has a love and dedication for, for modding. Um, can you put the link in chat? Absolutely. Absolutely. Hold on a second. Range.com. Boom. There you go. Oh, shit. <laughs> That's supposed to be a dot. dot com there we go that's better um, so I went and did some market research and I found out that there is no pay no like professional moderation companies out there so like it really is like you have to do a ton of groundwork right building up your stream and then monetizing your stream and then becoming an affiliate and then growing a population right and then having people that you know you can trust and rely on but they're still strangers you know a lot of times yeah, there might be people that love your stream or not, but they're not dedicated to be there. Um, and that's what I personally have seen in the past. I've seen people that they just, hey, life happened. You know what I mean? They had to go and, and live. So uh, that streamer got left out to dry. And when your stream blows up and there's hundreds of people in your stream, your chat's going crazy, you, need, you really do need someone who's professional that actually is going to be there not trying to get in the game not trying to share that experience, not trying to be on stream with you, just focused on on moderating and doing it well. Um, so the way that the the way that it works is um, we moderate your stream, 
regardless of what platform it's on. If you're on Facebook, that's fine. If you're on Trovo, that's fine. If you're on Twitch, that's fine. We also moderate your Discord while you're live. Um, that way, whatever's happening on your Discord, whoever's, whatever may happen with that toxicity on your stream can't go into your Discord. Um, any actions taken in the, in the amount of time that you're being um, paid or you're paying for a moderator is going to be put in a report. That report's going to be emailed to the streamer after the stream is, is over, and that streamer can do whatever they want with that information. Uh, this gives a streamer a lot of protection. It also gives a streamer a lot of, of uh, power to come back, and if they want to un unmute somebody, they can unmute them. If they want to uh, bring someone back, they can bring them back. If they want, you know, whatever they want to do, it's their, it's their show, it's their call. Uh, but that moderator gives them a, 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 a report of what happened in the stream during that, during that, that streaming session. If nothing happens, great. If all hell breaks loose, even better, because now that moderator knows what happened, when it happened. If the absolute worst case comes to, to, to a bear and that streamer's been threatened, either their life's been threatened or they've been sexually harassed or something like that, and that streamer wants to seek you know, help from a police department or whatever, then they now have a record of what happened, when, and how it happened. Um, and it's no he said, she said, it's all solid for that streamer. So this is absolutely for those people who are out there, content creators, and making their environment much more amenable, amenable um, a much safer place to do what you like to do, which is what? Create content, you know? It doesn't matter what you're creating it for. Um, if you're LGBTQIA, if you're female and you're playing first person shooters, it doesn't matter. Let us know what you need. Um, we have a free 15-minute consultation that you can sign up for. Um, we'll, be, we'll, we'll, we'll get in touch with you over Discord first. We'll find out what your needs are, and then we'll pair you up with, the, with, with, with a time that you want to go live, and we'll be there for you. Um, if, your, if your stream goes down while you're live, then we'll help you get that stream back up in record time. Um, for those of you who, <laughs> who saw my 24-hour um, affiliation stream. I streamed for 24 hours almost straight. And I say almost straight because the stream went down like three times, at least three times. And it was just mechanical, you know, it was, it was just Twitch. And um, I was using OBS and it took my mod to jump in and be like, okay, let's go. And she was there the whole time. Well, not the whole time. She went to sleep. But when she got to sleep, I was still going. And, um, <laughs> And it was a huge success because of part of the reason why I could do it was because of or because of my mod. So thank you so much for letting me get that out there. Bat Barnes. Thank you. <laughs> Recommended Guide the Ray. Oh, sweet. I have to make sure that doesn't happen again. <laughs> Hey, you know what? Um, I will totally do me a favor. Once we get to the end, because I think we're just going to do like 10, 10 like little segments of the book. We're going to do part one. But once we get to like the 10 segment, then we're going to be good to go. And thank you, BL, for posting that, for Guide the Rate. I appreciate that because I finally got, I finally got my affiliate pack. So I'm going to load that up uh, possibly tonight or tomorrow. And that way... Um, your your channel points will be will be kept in a little ammo can. It's super cool. Uh, we got a few uh, emotes. I have a whole new um, leg logo for the stream. That's going to be kick ass too. So I'm look, I'm really um, I'm really looking forward to like loading all that stuff up, getting it set up for you guys. So that those of you who've been here uh, like BL um, can totally use those things and and have fun with that. So okay, so for what we're doing today. All right, is this still is this still just like the the two of us? That song stuck in my head. Yes, it is. I can't be for the whole stream. No worries, dude. Hey, you know what? I always appreciate any time that that you hop on, man. Always, always. Um, so what we're doing today, right? This is a little something different, okay? Um, a couple of weeks ago, I saw this and I was like, I gotta do it. This is gonna be awesome because I'm a huge like Game of Thrones fan. I loved uh, Game of Thrones. I loved you know uh, the Hobbit. I loved Lord of the Rings, loved them all. And the one thing that really separates like the people who watch the show from the people who are going absolutely insane about it are the people that read the book. 
but when you rate them, say that it was me who rated <laughs> you will know. I'll go ahead and give you a shout out, my man. In fact, here, let me do this. Let me do this. Um, I'm going to copy your name right quick. Do it. Do it. Dang it. Here, I'll copy your name. No worries. Um, so, this is called The Rise of the School of Good and Evil by Soman Chianani. Chianani? I'm hoping that I pronounced that correctly. Um, if this is a cold reading, so I haven't I haven't gone into the book yet. I haven't like you know usually when people read stuff they'll read you know the chapter or whatever they're gonna read, and then they'll stream it so that they kind of know what they're doing. It's a little bit smoother, but you also you don't get to see what their first reaction is, and you don't get to talk about it. So I'm gonna have this uh, read in time so that there's no there's no uh, there's no this this it's all surprises it's all surprises. Um, also, because this book is like, it's like eight and up, okay? So I, I, I re I'm really excited to see what uh, they're going to do for the, for the, the, the uh, movie. The movie, Rise of the School of Good and Evil, comes out in September, September this year. So this is a great time to get into the books. There's like seven or eight books. Wait, hold on. Let me, let me make an accurate, accurate number here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, seven. Seven books. Eight, if you include Beasts and Beauty, Dangerous Tales. So, um, I'm sure we can get but but between now and, and, and September, dude. If this goes well, seven books, man, it's gonna be easy. It's gonna be a it's gonna be a good time. Um, also, I'm going to visit my nephews for Father's Day this weekend. I'm going to visit my my sister, and Saturday, uh, Saturday night. I'm going to stream reading this again, but I'm going to stream it to them. And I believe my my youngest nephew for this sister is like four, and her other son is like seven. So it's going to be awesome. They're going to be live on stream with me, and so it won't be just my reactions that you'll be seeing. It'll be theirs too, and hopefully it'll be a lot of fun. <laughs> it should be cool. Okay. So uh, let's go ahead and, and, and get into it. it is, I, wish, oh, I wish that OBS could show me like who was in the stream. So we got three people in the stream. Thank you so much for, for, for coming by. I appreciate it. Okay. Tiffany HTX, thank you for the follow. I appreciate that. I didn't even see that. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. That's awesome. Okay. So let's get into it, shall we? And um, I had someone tell me that my voice sounded like it could be ASMR. So who knows? Let me know how that. Let me know how that works out. If it's like eight o'clock and or nine o'clock or ten o'clock, and you are getting ready to go to bed, and my voice is soothing, by all means, feel free to just go to bed. Um, <laughs> I will have. Um, I'm, I'm gonna clip this and post it on YouTube as well. That way, if people want to, like, you know, get caught up, they can absolutely get caught up, and this should be a lot of fun. And there's also, and there's, like, illustrations. So I'm going to make sure that I show the illustrations. The first illustration is here. I think this is going to be really important because that looks like it's important. It looks very important. See you later, BL. Okay. So it looks like a wand, but I don't know. Who knows? Okay. Here we go, page number one. The pen writes the new schoolmaster's name, but this time it doesn't, it doesn't write one name, it writes two. The pen is called the Storian, long and steel, sharp at both ends. It floats into the air over the two boys, its tip like an eye, then it speaks. The voice warm and ageless, neither male nor female. In exchange for immortality, in exchange for eternal youth, I choose you. Two brothers, one for good, one for evil. Your loyalty to your blood, greater than the loyalty to your side. As long as you love each other, the world stays in balance. Good and evil, brother and brother. But every schoolmaster faces a test. Yours is love. Betray that love and the test is failed. You will wither and die. You will be replaced. Raise your hands to seal this oath. The boys do. Twins who wear the same face. 
Rian, skin golden, hair wild, lifts his hand. The pen glows hot and slashes his palm. Rian crying out. Then Rafal, skin milky white, hair like silver spikes. It stabs his hand and Rafal doesn't flinch. The pen or the pen's glow fades, its steel glowing growing cold. The twins glance at each other, burning with questions. But in the end, they ask only one. What happened to the last schoolmaster? The pen doesn't answer. Instead, a trembling voice rises from the shadows. A withered old man. I failed, he says. Chapter 1. Part 1. Part 1 is called Bad Magic. Page 7. If not for a boy named Aladdin, <laughs> the school of good and evil might never have started kidnapping readers like you. You'd be safe in your beds instead of stolen in a world where fantasy tales, where fairy tales come true for some and end in death for others. But Aladdin is where the tale starts. The tale of what happened between the schoolmasters, two brothers, good and evil, who ruled the legendary school. But Aladdin hasn't, Aladdin hasn't the faintest clue he's part of a larger story. He's too busy thinking about his magic lamp. He should have been working at his family's tailoring shop, but like usual, he slipped away the moment his father turned his back, bounding off, of, bounding off to Mahaba Market on the hunt for good fortune. Mahaba sparked him to life, the smells, the sounds, the girls. And an hour, and an hour there was worth a thousand days in his family's shop. He knew he would work in the shop, of course, that a good boy would do as he's told. But tailors don't marry the sultan's daughter. And that's what he dreamed of. A princess and a crown and the respect of the people, the kind of respect that no one gave him. Good morning, Raha. Busier than usual today, Aladdin greeted the fruit seller. Raja, excuse me, Raja. Raja gave him a dirty look. Lovely day, Shipla, Shipa. Look at all the crowds, Aladdin said to the fish vendor. Shilpa spat in his direction. Shall we play a game of dice, Basu? Aladdin asked a skinny man in the corner. Basu fled. Aladdin sighed, his hands in his pockets, in the pockets of his ragged blue jacket. He had a reputation as a thief, cheat, a loiterer. But what choice did he have? He had no money, status, or name in this world. And to earn those things, sometimes you have to take shortcuts. And today was the perfect day for action. And today was the perfect day for action, the market bustling like it was, like it was a holiday, full of kids with parents fussing over them, buying their favorite treats. Aladdin had never seen Mahaba like this, not even at New Year. That's when he heard two men talking in an alley as he passed, two men he knew well, Salim and Asim. It's the magic lamp, Salim was saying. How'd you get it? asked Asim. The Sultan found the Cave of Wishes, but his caravan was robbed by thieves on the way back to the palace, Salim confided. The thieves didn't know that it was a treasure. The thieves didn't know that it was the treasure lamp and sold it right to me. Make your three wishes then, said Asim. Aladdin's ears perked up. The magic lamp had been the source of legend for thousands of years, and no one had ever found it. And now these two goons had it in their hands. A likely story, Aladdin said, turning into the alley. Salim instantly put the lamp away. I already saw it. No doubt a fake, Aladdin scoffed, putting at, <laughs> puffing at his mop of black hair. But go ahead. 
Prove us the magic lamp. Prove it has any value at all. Salim and Asim peeked at each other. Then Salim held up the lamp and rubbed it with his palm. Suddenly, the lamp glowed. The thick red smoke billowed from its tip. Before Salim spot, or spotted it with his finger, the lamp went dull once more. Don't want to set the genie loose here, or we'll all get, or we'll all get a put in, or we'll all get put in the Sultan's jail. Salim warned. Aladdin's eyes flared. The lamp was real. He rushed forward. Sell it to me. Salim laughed. It's not for sale, you fool. Everything in this world is for sale, Aladdin insisted. Not this, Asim scorned. Not to a rat who cheats me and Salim out of our hard-earned money. A rat who's worthless, who's a worthless stain on his family, Salim added. Aladdin smiled through his teeth. They could insult him all they wanted. In a negotiation, whoever wants something more wins, and Aladdin doesn't. Aladdin didn't want the lamp. He needed it. Imagine the prince. Imagine the princess he would he could wish for. Imagine the man he could be, finally worthy of respect. I'll roll. I'll roll my dice for it. No, he says I'll roll you my dice for it. Aladdin insisted. If I win, I keep the lamp. If you win. I'll pay you back everything I've ever taken from you, and I'll never step foot in Sahaba Market again. He assumed the two men would mock his offer since he hardly had enough enough for, for lunch, let alone a chest of savings lying around. But to Aladdin surprised, Salim and Asim flashed each other a mysterious each other mysterious looks. Hmm, said Salim. He's cheated enough from us that if he pays us back, we can each buy a house near Bahim Beach. Plus, the thought of never seeing this, his dirty, rotten face again, said Asim. The two men turned to Aladdin. We have a deal. We do, Aladdin said, stunned. Over six you win. Under six we win, said Asim. Aladdin knew better than to waste more words. In his left pocket, he had dice carved to land over six. In his right pocket, he had dice carved to land under six. He drew the ones from his left pocket and threw them down in, down in the grimy street. I win, Aladdin gloated, holding out his palm. Give me the lamp. You cheated, Salim protested. A deal's a deal, Aladdin said firmly. The two men glanced at each other. With a heavy sigh, Salim handed over the lamp. Aladdin whistled as he walked away, stuffing the treasure under his jacket. He couldn't see the grins spreading across the faces of the two men he'd just beaten. Part 2. Well, Chapter 2. Wait. Chapter 1's good. How are we doing? Sweet. Awesome. Chapter 2. There were wishes to be made. A princess bride. A sultan's crown. His name remembered forever. But first he had to clean toilets. That was the price for skipping work. Which was better than no supper. The punishment his mother had decreed for a few nights before she realized that he would happily starve and die instead of toil in a shop. So he had to try something else. So she had to try something else. What good are you? She billowed, she billowed from the kitchen as he scrubbed the bathroom. And Aladdin was too full of her chicken stew and her sour, her sour cherry rice to be bothered. He, stubbed, he stuffed the lamp under his bed when he came home. As soon as his parents were asleep, he would take it to the garden and make his first wish. Because it didn't seem wise to unleash a genie in a house with such thin walls. His mother raised her voice. Hagrifa's son will Hagrifa's son will surely get taken to school for good and become famous and rich. And here my son is, stealing Pani or Pani Pani Pori and cheating people in Masaba Market. You think I don't know? Everyone knows. Aladdin stiffened. 
He'd forgotten it was, kidna it was kidnapping night. He glanced out the window at the row of houses down the lane, plates of halva and honey biscuits laid out, laid out on the window sills to entice the schoolmaster. No wonder it had been so crowded in the market. All those mothers and fathers bringing their children to Mahaba, thinking and hoping that it would be their last day together. That night, the schoolmaster would come and whisk their sons and daughters to the place where legends are born. After all, if a child was taken, if a child was taken as an ever, on a never, their parents would be celebrated in Shazaba, invited to, invited to the poshest parties, offered the best table at Giddy's restaurant, even sent flowers by the sultan himself. Of course, most children taken from, from Shazaba were for the good school, since Shazaba was one of the ever kingdoms in the endless woods. But over the years, there had been a handful of nevers taken too, since regardless of whether the kingdom labeled itself good or evil, rogue spirits always slipped through. Not that any of this applied to Aladdin. He was selfish, thieving, but he wasn't evil, not down to his core like the souls the schoolmaster wanted. Remember that strained dog he'd, he'd shared his pistachio tart with? Yes, the tart was stolen, but who cares? Or the girl, that this, or the girl at the schoolhouse they helped with her homework. Her being pretty had nothing to do with it. Then again, he wasn't good either. Even his parents would agree. The good school was for other kids, ones born to clearer paths, ones who didn't struggle like him to find their way. But at last, that struggle had been rewarded. He didn't need to go to the school for good and evil to achieve his dreams. He had the lamp now, the magic lamp, that would give him more riches and more power than the schoolmasters themselves. Finally, people would pay attention to him. People would know his name. But how to make the lamp work? Selene had just had just rubbed it, hadn't he? Or was there a magic word? He'd sort it out. First, he needed to finish his cleaning and pretend to sleep before his father came home. Otherwise, it would be an hour of lectures. Downstairs, the door swung open. Aladdin! A voice boomed. The boy slumped. It wouldn't have been so bad if his father hadn't plopped down on Aladdin's bed, right where the lamp was stuffed under the mattress, and his dad was so large that the boy worried the lamp would get crushed, along with the genie inside. What is it you're searching for, Aladdin? His dad started, still sweating from his trip up the stairs. What is it that takes you so far from home, or so far from my shop? Aladdin imagined he and the beautiful princess living in a palace a thousand times the size of his house, with locks on every door so no one could enter without permission. A palace he'd wished to life once his dad left his room. Aladdin? Hmm? The boy said. His father gazed hard at him. I think you don't want to work in my shop because you think you can do better. That you will be a big shot who will live in a castle and marry a king's daughter instead of working humbly for the rest of, or like the rest of us. You go chasing after phantoms when you have a perfectly good life in front of you. That never ends well. Anyone who knows, anyone who knows the story and its tale can tell you. You don't believe me, Aladdin thought. You think I can't win a girl like that and make something of myself. You and Mom think I'm worthless, just like Salim said. But he didn't voice any of these things. Instead, he yawned. Yes, Dad. So tomorrow I'll see you bright and early in the shop. Yes, Dad. Good boy. He gave Aladdin a hug, then closed the door behind him, and the boy promptly pulled the lamp from beneath the mattress. It was small and bronze, like a teapot with a elongated tip. 
carved with an intricate pattern of stars and moons, though there were no scratches or flaws in its surface. Aladdin supposed it was very, very old. How long had it been sitting there in the cave of wishes? The genie stuck inside, waiting for a new master to command him. How long had destiny anticipated this day when he, Aladdin, would be that new master? He held it close, studying his big, studying his big nose and thick eyebrows in the lamp's reflection. Inside the lamp was the life he was meant to live, the love and respect he deserved to find. Slowly his palm reached for its surface. Loud pounding shuttered his door. Hagrifa and Morley and Ropa are playing out their best sladus for the schoolmaster, his mother barked. They asked what I was doing what I was going they asked what I was doing to welcome him. You know what I said? Hiding in shame. Aladdin blew out the candle and snorted, pretending to be asleep. He hugged the lamp under his shirt, the cold metal against his skin. Soon his parents would be in bed, and he'd have his chance. Until then, he'd stay awake, rehearsing his wishes. Chapter 3 He woke to a sharp chill and hissing wind. Aladdin lurched up in bed and saw the window latch had opened. The November night leaking through. The lamp had rolled on to the floor near a pile of dirty clothes. How long had he been asleep? Surely his parents were in bed by now. He grabbed the lamp and put on a coat, angling to get out to the garden and summon the genie. But first, he redid the window latch, glancing out at the moon over the dark lane. Aladdin jolted backwards. Something was in the window. A shadow with shiny blue eyes, pressing against the glass, undoing the latch. Aladdin tried to run for the stairs, but the shadow hooked him by the collar and yanked him outside, dragging him through the garden, the boy too stunned to scream. But then he gathered his wits, realized a monster was kidnapping him, a monster that had no face. He grasped the, wind, he grasped the shadow, but his hand went straight through, which left Aladdin even more scared, flailing and kicking. Before the shadow shot him a harsh glare, and pulled him quicker through the grass, faster, faster, his grip sealing Aladdin's collar and swinging the boy like a hammer a hundred feet into the air. A bird caught him. If one could call the creature with fur a bird, it had skin like black velvet, its head blanketed in shiny black feathers, ending in a sharp beak, as if a bat had mated with a crow, and spawned something much larger, much larger. With a furious screech, it, buck, it bucked Aladdin into, into its spine, onto its spine. Then it stretched its wings, drawing black, shallow, sharp, drawing quick, shallow breaths, before it revved forward, slammed into thunderclouds, lightning detonating all around like fireworks. He had to be dreaming, Aladdin thought, shielding his ears from blasting thunder. Surely he was still in bed, conjuring this madness. But then the bird swooped, slashing out of the clouds, and Aladdin saw the sky filled with these sleek, furry creatures, all carrying menacing-looking children on their backs. Beneath them was a pockmarked manor that looked like it had been dipped in mud. The school for evil. One by one, the birds flung the children off, dropping them into hellish darkness. Aladdin's heart seized. So it had happened. He was evil after all. Now he could be condemned to, to a life of villainy. That is, if he could survive his time at the school with murderers and monsters. But then something peculiar happened. His bird didn't drop him in the evil school. 
Instead, it flew past it to the other side of the same manner, leaving all the other evil children behind. This side of the house was ivory white, with a grove of cherry blossoms shedding petals in the sun. With a disgusted screech, the bird threw Aladdin down. The boy screamed in shock, free-falling to certain death, until a tree caught him in its branches. Dazed, Aladdin poked his head up. All around, boys and girls were rising from the ground, clean-cut and luminous. The new students of this school, good students. Aladdin blinked. Impossible, he thought. Me? Good? But then he felt the metal outlines of something in his coat pocket, and slowly, and slowly a smile crept over the boy's face. The lamp. It had to be. He hadn't even made his first wish yet, and already his luck had begun to change. Chapter 4. We're going to go to Chapter 5 before we take a break. All right, we're going. Yeah, let's do this. Just before noon, the two schoolmasters came out of their study and headed, for, headed to the theater to welcome the new students. If Aladdin, if Aladdin was on your list for evil, how did he end up in my school? Rian asked, broad and tan with messy curls. Raffle glanced at him, his spikes of snow-colored hair as pale as his skin. Ask the stimps. They're your birds under your control, his good brother reminded. Until today, Raphael groused. They insist, they insist they put Aladdin where he belongs. That cheating thief? And ever? Rian said. Raphael nodded. I tried changing him in the ledger, too, but the Storian erased his name on the evil rule and switched him back to yours. The good schoolmaster stared at his twin. So it's the Storian's doing, then. Apparently, the pen has overhauled or overruled your judgment for the first time, Raphael surmised. It thinks we made a mistake? Rion replied. We don't make mistakes on souls. One of the new things we one of the few things we agree on, said Raphael. He grinned at his brother, but Rian was pensive as they made their way through the school, a modest chateau no bigger than the state house or a country villa. The brothers liked it this way, an intimate school that favored community rather than grand or selfish ambitions. Good students bunked in the east wing, evil students in the west. Evers and Nevers shared most of their classes together, along with common rooms that served good and evil both. At first, they considered separating good from evil more intently, but just as Rian and Rafal protected the school together, despite their opposing souls, they wanted the students to keep a healthy rivalry while respecting the balance of the woods. It is why the Storian had named the twins as schoolmasters, because their love for each other was greater than their loyalty to a side. As long as their love stayed strong, good and evil in balance, then the Storian reflected this balance in its fairy tales. Sometimes good won at the end of a story, sometimes evil. And it was these victories and, and losses that made each side strive to do better. In this way, the pen moved the world forward, one story at a time. As for the school's place in all this, the Storian's tales tracked the students who had graduated from the famous academy, which is why young Evers and Nevers worked so hard in their classes, hoping the pen would one day tell their story after graduation and make them into legends. The walls of the schoolmaster's study were lined with cases of these stories. The Frog Prince, Tom Thumb, Clever Maria, Goldilocks, and more. Every fairy tale ever told, each book a tribute to a former student. 
As they neared the supper hall, Rafal noticed his brother still quiet. Surely that thief boy isn't worth this much, this much thought, Rian looked at him. The pin must have switched him for a reason. What if Aladdin is evil? But the pin thinks I can make him good. What if he's a test? To turn a never into an ever? Rafal scolded, scowled. <laughs> Impossible. But we both agree this boy isn't good, and we don't make mistakes when it comes to souls, Rian replied. Yet if I can turn him good, if I can make him into an ever, then what will stop you from doing it with all evil souls? Rian mocked. Expecting Rian, ex Rafal mocked, expecting Rian to laugh. But his brother didn't. Instead, he smiled, as if it was exactly what he'd been thinking, too. Rafal went cold. What happened to balance? It's the Storian's test, isn't it? Take it up with the pen, Rian quipped. Then he saw the dark expression on his brother's face. I'm only joking, Rafal. A soul can't be changed. Either we're wrong, or he is good. We're never wrong, said Rafal, or the pen's wrong, and my attempts to turn him into an ever will fail, said Rian. And fail miserably, Rafal snipped. He peered at his brother. But you'll still try. Wouldn't you, if you thought the story might be on your side? Rian teased, nudging him. Perhaps, said Rafal, but he pulled away, as if a challenge had been issued, each brother silently claiming the student for his team. The student they had yet to meet. The schoolmasters reached the theater. Rian glanced at his evil twin, seeing he was the pensive one now. You know, Rafal, ever since we've been teenagers, you've become very moody. We've been teenagers for a hundred years, Rafal replied. Precisely, said Rian, before he placed his palms on the wooden doors and pushed them both open. Chapter 5. Before we go into chapter 5, let's, let's jump over and see. Alrighty. Chapter 5. Like most kids in the endless woods, Aladdin had assumed the school for good would be a feast of of sword fighting, pretty girls, and late night mischief in the dormitories. <laughs> Dick mood, my guy. <laughs> hey, some people never grow up. Some people are adult adolescents, teenagers forever. Sorry. It's all Nilla's fault. I got distracted. <laughs> we didn't expect with so many rules. Rule number ten, said Professor Mayberry, dean of good, an elegant, dark-skinned woman who stood so straight and snapped, and snapped her consonants so crisply it made Aladdin's buttocks clench. Good and evil are both invited to the snowball, the winter dance that takes place on Christmas Eve. All evers are required to go, and all nevers are encouraged not to, growled the skeletal man next to her, the skin a particular shade of gray his hair more like salt and pepper, his eyebrows thick and very black. This was Professor Humberg, Dean of Evil. After the first year, you'll be divided into three tracks based on your performance. One for leaders, one for followers, one for mogriffs. Aladdin yawned and yawned at his bow tie, bored out of his skull and irritated that he'd been harassed in his cockamamie outfit complete with ruffles and tails like he was a circus monkey. Also, what in the world is a mogriff? He looked around the theater just as fro-fro, just as fru-fru, as his uniform, with ornate wooden pews, rosette windows, and he wondered how the evil kids could put up with all this puffery. Instead, the nevers were seated across the aisle, about fifty of them, in the same frilly uniform as good, while on his side, twenty-five ever-boys listened obediently to the deans, as did the twenty-five ever-girls seated in the rows behind him. One had, t one had caught his eye, a small girl whose feet barely touched the floor, with bright pink eyeshadow, rosy cheeks, and purple ribbons in her black hair. 
Aladdin tried to make eye contact, but her focus was firmly on Professor Mayberry. Rule number 11. The school's master's study is strictly off-limits, the Dean of Good declared, as are all faculty offices. If he wanted rules, he should have stayed in Shazaba, Aladdin grouched silently. By now, he'd have made his three wishes, and have a princess, and a place for everyone he would know, or every, and a palace, and everyone here would know his name. He patted at the lamp in his jacket pocket. He hadn't a second to himself since he hadn't had a second to himself since he won it from Salim. It was good having the lamp, if he never got, even if he never got a chance to use it. Or excuse me, what good was having the lamp if he never got a chance to use it? Aladdin glanced over at the Nevers, dressed just like the Evers, but even he looked. But then he looked closer and saw they were suitably altering their uniforms, slashing the sleeves, cutting holes in the shirts, while showing off scars and tattoos and the weapons and the weapons they'd managed to sneak through. Rule breakers, Aladdin thought. Definitely his people. He whirled around to the girl with purple ribbons. Want to see something? She ignored him, her eyes on the stage. Rule number 12, Mayberry was saying. You are forbidden to leave your dorm rooms after 9 p.m. Look, Aladdin pestered, reached into his pocket. It's the magic lamp. Sure it is, the girl snipped, not looking at him. Next to Aladdin, a tall boy with fair skin and red hair chortled. Good luck. That's Kaima, the princess of Mavendale. Every guy has got his eyes on her for the snowball, including Hephaestus. Hephaestus? This sounds like, this sounds like a, a Greek name. It's not Hephaestus. It might be Hephaestus. Hephaestus. Let's go with Hephaestus. He nodded down the pew at a muscular brown boy with a shaved head and pure green eyes who all the other Everboys kept peeking at seeking his approval, even though Hephaestus seemed unaware of their existence. Which means you don't stand a chance, the red-haired boy warned Aladdin. This was the wrong thing to say, because now, because now that Aladdin had the magic lamp, he could make a wish for anything he wanted, including thrashing Hephaestus in a wrestling match or taking Princess Kaima to the snowball. But it was even more the wrong thing to say because he knew that he could win his princess with the lamp. He wanted to win her without it. He spun back to Kaima. I swear it's the magic lamp, straight from the Cave of Wishes. Kaima sighed. No, it's not, because everyone, including my father, has tried to find the Cave of Wishes, and it cannot be found. So, by all means, keep telling lies, but not to me, because lies have a certain smell on the breath on the breath, and yours is starting to stink. Aladdin flushed, his teeth grinning. Guess I'll have to show you then. He raised a hand to rub, the, to rub it. You there! A voice snapped from the stage. A sea of evers and nevers turned to Aladdin. The boy froze, like a cat trying to, trying to blend with its surroundings. Kaima smirked at him. Is there something you'd like to share with us? Professor Mayberry asked, frowning. No, said Aladdin. He says the lamp, he said he has the magic lamp. The red-haired boy to his right chuck or heckled. The lamp from the Cave of Wishes. Who did another boy to his left? Who's, who'd been eavesdropping? I'll say that again. The lamp of cave, the lamp from the cave of wishes, hooted another boy to his left, who'd been eavesdropping. Students on both sides of the aisle jeered and sniggered. Aladdin could see Hephaestus giving him a pitying look. I do have it, and there's a genie inside, Aladdin, Aladdin defended angrily, holding it up, but the laughter was, was louder now. A 
theater full of new students, bonded by a fool to mock. Aladdin leapt to his feet, raising his voice. When I make my first wish, I'll turn all of you into frogs. Then you'll see. Now let's hope it won't come to that, a male voice echoed. Everyone in the theater went still, the deans included. Aladdin watched the twin schoolmasters enter, gliding down the aisle. The evil brother with spiky white hair and milky, and milky pale skin. The good brother, warm and wild-haired, both of them matching blue robes. Aladdin had heard rumors of these two immortal teenagers who ruled the school and protected the storian that wrote the woods' tales. But now in their presence, he sensed the power behind their light-colored eyes, eyes that were focused entirely on him. Let me have it, the good brother ordered. Aladdin didn't dare disobey, even, even if parting with the lamp made him sick. He surrendered his treasure. The good schoolmaster inspected it, then glanced at his twin before offering the lamp back to Aladdin. A fake, no doubt about it. The evil schoolmaster studied the lamp over his shoulder, equally unimpressed. But then something in his face changed. A twinkle in the frosty pools of his eyes, even as if the ice had cracked. As if the ice had cracked. I'm not sure I agree, brother, he said, snatching the lamp before Aladdin could retrieve it. The good schoolmaster gave the evil one a confused look, but the evil brother was already striding down the aisle, handing the lamp to Dean Humberg before whispering quietly aloud, Lock it in your office where no one can get it. Dean Humberg shot Aladdin a glare. Certainly, Master Rafal. The good brother seemed baffled by all this, asking his twin, Can we get on with our welcoming speeches, or shall we investigate other students' keepsakes in case they're the Holy Grail? By all means. Give your speech first, Rafal replied. You know, since the story is on your side. Rian pursed his lips. With that attitude, maybe it should be. Both schoolmasters peered at each other, then looked out at the students. At a student. But Aladdin didn't notice their stares. The boy consumed with a single thought. How to get into Dean Humberg's office. A thought that the evil schoolmaster seemed to be encouraging because he grinned right at Aladdin the moment the boy settled on a plan. So that is the end of chapter five. That's cool, so what do you think? I feel like it's, it's got a lot of elements of a lot of stuff that's already out there, but what's his plan? How's he gonna get into the dean's office? What will happen? What's up, Nilla? You still here? <clears throat> awesome. All right. So that was the first five chapters of the rise of the school of good and evil. Um, <laughs> what's up? That was that was good. That was good. Um, again, this is a cold reading, so I'm not going to go and read chapters six through ten. I'm going to leave it. Um, I'm not going. I'm not going to go peer, peering forward. But we'll see what happens with the, with the lamp. We'll see what happens with Aladdin. And we'll see what his plan is to get his lamp back, shall we? You know, it's kind of funny, you know? You would think a teenage boy, of course. Of course he would blow one of his perfectly good wishes on hooking up with, hooking up with the cutest girl in the room, right? While thrashing the guy who, you know, he thinks is above him. Of course, because teenagers, because kids. So, <laughs> like, <laughs> you could be like, oh, I wish to be, you know, forever like the cleverest person in the world, or I wish to be, you know, like the smartest person in the world, or I wish to be all these things or not, but no, I want the girl and I want to beat up the big guy. So, that's interesting. That's all. That's, that's, that's fun. 
anyway, that was great. Um, it only took us like an hour. That's cool, like five chapters in just, in just an hour. But the chapters were pretty short anyway. Um, there's one thing I like about it. It's the way that it's written. It seems like it's pretty easy to, to, to read cold, which is nice. Um, that way I'm having the first reaction and you all are having it as well. Why is it, why is my camera so dark? You can't even, can't even see the, wow. Hmm, I'm gonna fix that. I need, I need like a light in front. I've never needed it before, but oh well. Um, thank you all for, for hanging out for the first five chapters. Again, this is The Rise of the School of Good and Evil by Soman uh, Shianani. Soman Shianani. So, there you go. There's a, there's a little something about here, too. Um, hold on a second. So this is the, the, the back of the book right now. It says, uh, The Rise of the Good School and Evil is a Triumph. It takes the magic school novel to a new height with a startling, subversive story that's impossible to predict. Well, the more people we get in chat, the more predictions that we'll have. So we'll see about that. Rarely have we seen such a complex bond between boys. Twin teenage schoolmasters, one good, one evil, torn between loyalty to one to each other and loyalty to their side. So that sounds like something that will be developing. Uh, fairy tale lovers will find everything they wish for. Action, thrills, mystery, and unexpected appearances from old legends of lore. So I'm wondering which legends of lore are going to be coming out. Which ones are they going to be throwing at us? And sounds like we've already got a few. They mentioned a few earlier. Let's see. But... Like the, ba like the best fairy tales, this isn't a book for kids. It is a book for everyone who enjoys the twists of a whopping good story, whether young or old, good or evil. That was by Melissa De La Cruz. She's the number one New York Times bestselling author of The Isle of the Lost. So that's pretty cool. Um, there was something about the author. There was, I was reading something about the author, and I wanted to share it because that, that was pretty, it's pretty cool. The author had done some of their some of his accomplishments. Um, Soman Shianani, Shianani. Let me give you a picture of him. That is the dude right there. That's the man. Wait, there we go. Boom for Disney. Oh, right on. That's cool. I didn't even know that. I didn't know she wrote that. Okay, so Shoman Chianani, right, is a New York Times best-selling author of the School of Good and is the School for Good and Evil series. The fairy tale saga has been sold over three million copies, been translated into over thirty languages, and will soon be a major motion picture from Netflix. Shoman will have ex exec will be the executive producer. Great. His most recent book, Beasts and Beauty: Dangerous Tales, was almost an instant New York Times bestseller. Awesome. Shoman is a graduate of Harvard University and received his MFA in film from Columbia University. Every year, he visits schools around the world to speak to kids and share his secret that reading is the path to a better life. That's really cool. That's really, really cool. And of course, you know, Harvard. Yay. Um, not that I've been there, because I haven't been there. I don't you know. Whatever. But so far, so good. So thank you so much. Um, before I let you guys go for tonight, because... I'm, it's been a long day. Um, I wanted to throw one more plug back in there. Uh, we talked about it a little bit at the beginning of the stream, so talk about it a little bit at the end of the stream. Um, live Downrange at live, www.livedownrange.com. It's paid online professional moderators for content creators. So if you are a uh, streamer or you're a content creator, it doesn't matter what type of content it is. If it's just chatting, thank you so much, Nilla. If it's just chatting, if it's uh, streaming, if it's video games, no matter what it is, it's your place, it's your self-expression, it's your community, and we simply want you to be able to do that without toxicity, without harassment, without negativity. So what we have is we have we, we have paid moderators. In fact, you're looking at it right now in, in chat. Nila will be there for you, and she'll make sure that everything is good to go on your stream. She is an extremely gifted, extremely ta talented moderator. So... Um, www.livedownrange.com at 995 and 99 yeah 995 an hour or you can do a package of 1 hour or 4 hours if we all know that streamers kind of go for go for a bit but if you're doing something like tonight like I just did it's only 1 hour there we go it's only 1 hour <laughs> and um you should be able to to express yourself and enjoy that time with your community 
in a way that would make you feel feel good about yourself and feel good about what you're doing. Um, we, you don't need anyone in there making that that space a toxic space or a less than a less than positive space for you. So, um, thank you again. Hope you all have a wonderful night. I'll be back tomorrow, same time. We're going to do chapters six through ten, and then uh, Saturday I'm going to Alexandria, Louisiana. I'll be seeing my my sister and my brother-in-law for Father's Day. Excuse me, for Father's Day, and I'll be doing chapters ten through fifteen with my nephews, my two nephews. They're they're knee high to a duck, so hopefully they will be. Uh, hopefully they'll enjoy it. Um, I'll also try and uh, clip that. Uh, thank you. So yeah, it's it's going to be interesting. Um, I'm going to clip what we've done today, chapters one through five, and load that to uh, YouTube so that anybody that wants to catch up can catch up. Um, you have to read them one through five beforehand. You're right. I mean, or they can just watch it. Who knows? <laughs> I love the rules. Thank you. Hey, Tiffany. Thank you for thank you for this. Is a first time chat. Right on, dude. Thank you for thank you for showing up. Thank you for hanging out. I appreciate it. Still trying to figure out how to use this. Absolutely. Don't worry. You know what? With time, you'll be you'll be a normal regular in no time. In no time. Tiffany, Nilla, Nilla, Tiffany. Oh, yeah. All right. So, I've been listening for a while but didn't know how to react. <laughs> well, I appreciate it. What would you think, Tiffany? What would you think about uh, chapters one through five? Would you, did you feel like it was – I felt a little bit of a – I felt a little like when it first started, like a little Harry Potter-ish. But you know what? But that's okay, though. It's supposed to – It's it's got that, that element to it. But – at least it's not like an owl. The kid was just like, get the fuck out of here. Let's go. Don't forget to follow. Don't forget to subscribe if you want, if you feel like it. Um, and I, you know what? I should, I should start saying that. Um, you enjoyed it? That's good. That's good. Um, this is, my, this is my, my first time doing a cold reading. I've never done this before. Casually kidnapped by a spirit bird. <laughs> yeah, could you imagine if, if th that, that would have saved Harry Potter a lot of, a lot of frustration? Just have the odds just run in the window and be like, whoop, out. But this would be interesting, though. And I like that it is it is pretty different, you know what I mean? That's kind of cool. I imagine that if I was his parents, I'd be freaking out because, you know, all of a sudden my kid's gone. But I wonder if that's why they leave the the uh, the food out. If I wonder if they're expecting the spirits to come and take their kid or if they're wanting to come for the spirits to come and take their kids. So like everyone must be in on it instead of it being kind of like in um, Harry Potter where muggles have no idea what's going on apparently. So yeah, yeah, they're trying to like bribe them to take their kids. Yeah, and this one's like, you know, fuck it. <laughs> their parents are like, no one's going to take my kid because my kid's a shit. And the, there he goes. But I wonder how I wonder I wonder how pissed his dad's gonna be. His dad's gonna think that he's like running around, you know. Like, that little son of a bitch didn't come back to the shop. Mom's all angry. Dad's angry. Everybody's pissed at him, and he's over here at school, <laughs> tearing the brothers of good and evil apart because he's got to get this damn lamp. Honestly, if, if, if I would have gotten the magic lamp, I wouldn't have ran home. I would have run my ass in the corner, had my three, you know, my three, my, my, my three wishes done, and I'd been like, whew, right in the garbage can, because you know what? You never know. He waited too long. What's his problem? He waited too long, and now they got his shit, and who knows what's going to happen. Yep. You got to know what you want, man. The opportunities don't last forever, you know? Opportunities don't last forever. They've been zero waiting. What would Nilla? What would your what, what was what would one of your wishes have been? I wonder if like a good wish would be like <clears throat> the ability the ability to like know what's going to happen and perfectly predict the stock market at all times. <laughs> it's 
if I had a wish, I'd be like, I want to be able to perfectly predict the stock market at all times. You'd be rich forever. You'd have riches, you'd have money, and with that money, you can buy whatever the fuck you want. In fact, because it wasn't like a stock market, it's all the stock markets, which means that you could do it around the clock. I'd be the best day trader in the world, man. Best day trader in the world. But see, that's, that's an adult wish, though. You know, like no no ten year old or twelve year old, no teenager, you know, would be like, I wanna predict the stock market. Nobody would they wouldn't do that shit. They'd be like, I want a fucking Corvette. You know <laughs> It can't even drive it yet. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. Cause I mean technically any other wish you can have that wish. <laughs> Slip those hints on your onto your friends, right? You know what? Actually, how much you want to bet that that wish would be a curse? It would probably become a curse. Because I could, I could perfectly predict the stock market, but then the SEC would come after me for insider trading. And they wouldn't be able to prove it, but they just would. You know, they, they'd be like, this fucker just keeps on winning. Like, like when you go to a casino and you just keep winning and winning and winning and winning and winning. Finally, it doesn't matter if you're doing it, like if you know what you're doing. Or it doesn't matter if you're just damn good at poker. The house is going to show up with like guards behind you and they're going to be like, I don't care how it's happening. You're done. I don't care how it's happening. I don't care what rules you have or what rights you have. You're done. So I probably either get killed, imprisoned, or... Hmm. What's the third thing? There's always three things. If I... Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. My second wish would have to be something like super powery, you know? Like invisibility or flight or some shit. Just be like, blink, gone, and just walk the fuck out. <laughs> More money to be made. Anywho. <laughs> That's fun. All right. So... Hopefully tomorrow we'll find out. Well, not hopefully. Tomorrow we will find out what happens, right? Seems like there's already mystery stirring. So, teleportation. Oh, yeah. What was that movie where the dude could, like, teleport anywhere? Oh, crap. He could, like, jump. By the way, um, if you see this, this stuff for stream elements, go ahead and click on that. that. Yes, Jumper. Yeah, that movie was awesome. It was it was fresh, you know. I, I really I, I really liked it. Hayden Christensen, yeah. I, don't, I I haven't seen that guy in like anything else. But it was it was good. It was good. I could jump my way into a bank vault and jump and jump to like. I don't know. Nothing about it. like I don't I don't know where I would jump to. Yeah yeah like Nightcrawler. Hmm. I think the difference, but could and, and Jumper could they take someone with them? Because Nightcrawler's like, he's like, bitches, we all go into the beach, let's go, and like everybody's gone. <laughs> he's just like, let's go, and poof. Of course, you know, I guess, I guess like they they both could get stuck in a wall, right? Because that's what that's what Nightcrawler was was worried about getting stuck in a wall or something. Or, you know, having one of those things where you just, like, think about yourself being on the bottom of the ocean, and then, boom, you and all your friends are fucked. But, you know, I mean, I'm sure that when, with, with that type of a power, you, you'll fuck up once, but not twice. Ah, there you go. Wait a minute. No, no, no. And Jumper, he had pictures all over his room, right? So, like, he had to, he had to like, be able to see where he was going, and then he could jump there. So, wouldn't that be the same as... As, as, as Nightcrawler? Because I think, isn't there like, see now like my, my memory's like, ooh, he was like in the in the desert, but he had a picture of the desert in his in his room. Something like that. I don't know. You get into superhero arguments. Swear to God, Nightcrawler doesn't have to actually have been where he's jumping to. He just has to have an idea or a picture in his head. He had to have been there. Not just seen a picture. Ah, okay, okay. So Nightcrawler couldn't just like poof his way into a into a bank vault. Not like a like Jumper. He was bound by rules. See, doggone rules, pesky ass rules, man. Oh, speaking of Marvel, thank you, Nilla. So I am excited, and I am hoping. I am hoping. This is not spoiler. This isn't spoiler. I'm just hoping that at some point in time. 
we get to see Wanda and I'm hoping that at some point in time we get to see Wanda and Magneto. I want to see Wanda and Magneto in the same fucking scene, father daughter. It's got to happen. It 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 just it just it just needs to fucking happen. It needs to happen. I don't know. I agree. I agree. I liked um if you ever watched Stanley's biography, it is really really good. It's incredibly good. I liked how like for the time that he was going, you know, growing up, um, Stan Lee was incredibly progressive, like incredibly. He was he was very forward thinking. Um, so I, I really, I really, Stan Lee's amazing. The, the, the guy is just awesome. <laughs> My shipper's hard over here, like Wanda and Nightcrawler in the same scene. <laughs> oh my gosh! All right, well. I'm going to hop off, um, eat some food, and uh, probably hit the rack pretty soon because i got a really early day tomorrow. So thank you so much for hanging out with me. Uh, Tiffany, thank you so much for hanging out. Welcome to, welcome to uh, Twitch. I hope you come back and uh, have fun. Um, please hit the follow button, and uh, that would be really, really cool. I know that Tiffany's already followed you followed last month. Thank you so much for that. I appreciate it. And um, I will see you all. They have a better daughter in one of the spinoff comics. Damn it. No, you're going to have me talking all night. <laughs> um, yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you there. All right. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I appreciate it. Um, I'm going to clip the, the book portion of the reading, or the book portion, the reading portion of the stream, and get that on to... YouTube and probably get that done tomorrow that way if anybody wants to get caught up they can and you can hit me up on YouTube and I'll put the the link in the stream as well so that you know where to go all right that's all for tonight thank you so much I'll see you all tomorrow for chapter 6 through 10 see you later be safe and if you're anywhere near Texas fucking hydrate because it's hot as hell it's hot as hell down here and it's only getting worse so yeah drink water Stay alive. Stay safe. Bye. Good night. Stop streaming. Is that stop button? There it is, yeah.